Okay. Here we go. Conservation Administrator, Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, our longtime Conservation Administrator, John Keeley, uh, is leaving us and retiring um, at the end of the month. Uh, through the efforts of uh, the Human Resource Department and John himself, they interviewed uh, a bunch of candidates uh, for the position. And I'm very happy to report uh, that their overwhelming recommendation uh, was for me to appoint our Assistant Conservation Administrator, Eileen Coleman, uh, to the full-time position. Uh, Eileen's been working for the town since December of 2017, both as the Assistant Conservation Director as well as the town's first stormwater uh, administrator. So that was sort of a new thing that came in and uh, she really <coughs> seized the bull by, bull by the horns there and got us under control with that program at the state and all the new requirements that came into that. Uh, prior to working for the town of Burlington, uh, she spent a lot of time volunteering uh, with the Arlington Conservation uh, Commission uh, in addition to uh, filling a, a short-term role there as an interim uh, conservation administrator at one point. Uh, I will tell you that uh, several members of the Conservation Commission reached out to me privately and strongly advocated uh, for Eileen for the position. Uh, some of her educational background is she has a, a bachelor's in zoology uh, from the University College of Dublin, Ireland. Uh, she has a master's degree in applied environmental sciences uh, from Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, I was very proud a couple years ago to see Eileen graduate from uh, Suffolk University with a certificate in local government and leadership management. Uh, that's a program that we've been encouraging a lot of our employees to participate. She did, it's very rigorous, uh, so we're very uh, grateful for that. And overall, it's always a great feeling uh, when we have the talent to replace our department heads already working for us here in town. So it's a, I'm very happy to make the appointment uh, and I requested the board. I wish to appoint Eileen Coleman as the conservation administrator uh, for the town of Burlington and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. So moved. Second. So moved and second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed, against? Five zero zero. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell your family they missed out. I will. Thanks. Thanks, Eileen. Uh, just to sort of close the loop on John, um, the town will be holding a coffee to celebrate uh, John's retirement on Wednesday uh, from 4 to 6, open to the public, uh, over at the Grandview Farm. Uh, so if anybody can make it over there, um, to say goodbye to John. Here. Huh? Here? It's here? I'm sorry, it's here. Thanks, thank God for Lynn. Uh, actually, John Keeley will be Wednesday from 4 to 6 here in the town hall meeting room. So if anybody can uh, be available, it's open to the public. So anybody that's worked with John over the years, uh, please do stop by. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much and congratulations. Uh, we have a proclamation, I believe, Sarah. <laughs> Do you have that Sure, happy to do so. So as hopefully everybody knows, June is Pride Month and we wanted to formally proclaim Pride Month in the town of Burlington. So I will go ahead and do that. Uh, whereas the town of Burlington supports the rights of every citizen to experience equality and freedom from discrimination, welcomes people of diverse backgrounds and believes a diverse population leads to a more vibrant community, and whereas all people, regardless of age, color, disability, gender identity, marital status, national origin, race, religion, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic background, have the right to be treated on the basis of their intrinsic value as human beings. And whereas the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans transgender, queer, intersex, asexual communities offer many valuable contributions contributions to the cultural, academic, civic, artistic, social, and economic successes of the town of Burlington, 
and whereas in support of Burlington's LGBTQIA plus members, groups in leadership in promoting diversity and, in, and inclusivity, the Burlington Public School District's commitment to equity, and our own commitment to eradicate prejudice and discrimination everywhere. Therefore, the Select Board hereby proclaim the month of June 2024 Pride Month in the town of Burlington and encourage all residents to reflect on the difficult work for equality that LGBTQIA plus members face and to celebrate their valuable contributions to our community. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Paul, anything? Any comments from you? Uh, no, I don't know oh, if uh, okay. anyone from the board right. wants to talk yep. about um, the, the celebration uh, yep. and the date and time and all that stuff. I, I'll, I'll defer to Sarah on that one. Sure. So on June 1st, Saturday, um, from 11 to 2, I believe it is, there will be a Pride celebration on the Burlington Common in honor of, um, it's called Leo's Pride. Um, Leo Abramoff was the founder of this event along with his wife, Carrie Lynn. Leo was a fierce advocate for the LGBTQ community. Um, he was also a trans man. He passed away last year, and uh, we continue to honor his tradition of advocacy with that event, and it's just a really fun event. Um, it's super colorful, lots of music, dancing, uh, uh, positive energy activities for the kids. Um, so I just encourage everybody in the community to go to the Common on June 1st, uh, between 11 and 2, and to celebrate Pride. Thank you. Uh, no comment. No. Okay. Sure. All set. Nothing further. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, One hundred. A new general license. Uh, Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's a couple uh, new licenses that came in uh, over the past month or so that we're putting before the board for approval. Uh, we have a secondhand store junk license uh, at the Burlington Mall and also a taxi livery license uh, over at 2 Burlington Woods Drive. And is anybody here? Um, here, the, um, the, uh, the livery though, right? Yeah. Yeah, so nobody for the first one. No, see, down here, so they were told to be here. Put that one aside to the end, Mr. Chairman, and uh, take up the livery one if, yep, if you absolutely. wish. And then yep. uh, hopefully the Secondhand store folks will will make their way into the meeting. Absolutely. Oh, they're, here. they're right here, right? If you could just sign in on the paper and state your names, we'll go from there. Tell the board a little bit about your business. And oh, yeah. I'm Kevin Donacimento, owner of Azevedo Coach LLC. Um, it's a livery company, Limousine, and based in Burlington. And I'm going to be operating, you know, airport transfers and charters and all that. Okay. Um. Everything seems to be in order as far as paperwork. So. Yep. Any questions? No questions. Any questions, Nick? Um, in terms of um, vehicles and where you'll be parking them? Um, in Burlington. To at Burlington Woods Drive. At the, at the Burlington yeah. Woods Drive location? Yeah. Okay. And about, I'm sorry, how many vehicles do you plan on operating? Just one. Just the one? Okay. That's all for me. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Probably a question more for Paul. We're starting to see these pop up more and more. Do we have a limit? Is this a newer policy, or do we have a limit in town? I think Nick might have alluded to this before when we had another one on how many of these we're going to be issuing, or what's the kind of status on these? I don't believe there's a limit, uh, Mike. Um, I think one of the biggest concerns that the board has had over the years is just to make sure that the, these vehicles weren't parking in residential neighborhoods. Uh, so I think that was one of the criteria that the board always looked for, that they had a business address and the, the ability to park their vehicles not in a driveway or on a residential street. So but I don't believe there's any limitation on the, the amount of uh, businesses like this that we could have in town. Okay, you know, it just seems like they're popping up more and more. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. 
No, Mike's right on that, and Paul, you're right. There's um, just there's no you know no parking of the cars on your personal property, but so mm -hmm. you're going to store them at another residence. And as you only said, there's only one up, not a residence, another business, and there's only one car right now. Okay. All right. Um, if there's no further questions. I'm sorry. Your question? No, I was just. I'm. I'm Sandra. I'm Kevin's mom, and um, maybe in the future, within maybe the next year or two, maybe get another vehicle. But I don't know. Does he have to come before the board again to request um, to add the additional on, vehicle? Uh, any vehicles at all? It, it gets more, uh, voted on every year. The license once you get it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that if you added a new vehicle to the fleet that you would have to come in and update that during the year. But it would be okay. part of your renewal. Just one next year He'll, once that. Yeah. It was after this is approved, he, he needs to go to the police station. Mm -hmm. They give all the final paperwork and whatnot. So at that point, if he was going to add, they would they would need that information. Okay. We just do that <coughs> renewal. Okay, just so that we know, because yep. it's our first time on this. <laughs> Question. Okay, on that, uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, will make a motion we approve the taxi livery license at 2 Burlington Woods Drive. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? 5 0 0. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Much yep. appreciated. Thank you. Good luck. So, what do we go forward for? What do we do? So, we'll here? click the next button mm -hmm. now, and then it will generate so that you'll get that notification, and then you can print the license yourself. Contact the police department. All right, awesome. thank you so much, thank guys. Thank you so much. Good luck. Okay. Uh, next, we have um, Wegmans mm -hmm. approval, one day alcohol license. Here he is. Good evening. How are you? I'm well, you? Sign the paper and state your name and we'll get going on this. Jeff Kaczynski from Wegmans Food Markets. Thank you. All right, so looking to do the same thing we did last year with the beer garden out on Arcadio. Uh, it's in controlled atmosphere uh, where it's roped off around our uh, patio area. Uh, it is uh, required that you have ID. It's 100% uh, ID, uh, can't get in without it. And that's our own Wegmans trained individuals who check IDs and then you're given a wristband. Uh, after you're given a wristband, you're given uh, tickets uh, to provide uh, pours uh, for beers on the patio. Uh, this year, it'll be just uh, three uh, two ounce trial beers. So you can kind of figure out what brewery you want to try a beer from. And then it would be two uh, beers uh, with more <coughs> tickets that you would you would be able to, uh, to purchase to have a full beer on the patio. Um, that, uh, that along with some games, um, in that in the area and um, some some live music. Okay, so the only thing that's really changed is the two ounce beer in between, right? Yeah, the from two last year. the two 12 ounce beers is the thing that changed from last year right. uh, versus just doing all free samples. Okay, and nothing's changed. The same as last year. Same as yeah. Uh, same environment. Sarah, any questions? Uh, yes, just one question. Also provide any kind of food service? Yep, so we have a, what's called Meals to Go, and you can order food there, and then we also have pretzels and snacks for That's folks. on the patio, not inside? It's, so it's prepared inside and brought outside uh, through the Meals to Go app. Oh, great. So it's a, there's a QR code on the picnic table or the um, tables outside. You can scan for food, and then it'll be available in our pickup area, which is just inside uh, the door, still in that controlled area. Okay, and this is the second year you're doing this? Third year. Oh, it's third. the third, okay. Yep. How did it go last year? And the year? Very well. The last two years have been very successful. Uh, our biggest feedback was, it's great that we tasted these beers, but now we want one. So uh, that, was, that was the ask this year, is to be able to do that in a controlled environment. Um, obviously, it's a family grocery store, so we're not looking for overindulgence. We want to make sure that we're responsible, and uh, we aim to do just that. Thank you, sir. No, no issues with this. I've been a couple times and very well run, um, very controlled area, and I have no issues. With luck. Thank Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Nick? Thanks, Chairman. Um, Jeff, has it, it always been eight tables? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that you have like roughly 50 people you're looking to have. Yeah. What's it been, uh, like, has the, has the number been increased?
increasing year over year? It has, yeah. 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 It started at about 20 and then has been creeping up. Last year was, you know, between that 50 and 60 range. It really weather de dependent sure. and uh, the time of year, what's going on in, in the community. So, yeah. Um, but overall, it's been very receptive with the community. That's great. Um, just, to, I mean, a uh, tangential question. Uh, are you seeing at all an uptick in business either during those hours or in relation to the event? I'd say yes, uh, especially Thursday nights. Um, it does bring in some traffic, uh, especially on the third half. You go out to dinner, or maybe before dinner, you go try some new beers, and then you you are in one of the you know food restaurants there on third ab so it definitely helps uh, our customer base and third ab as a whole uh, for the community to to uh, drive business in there yeah listen i mean you know i i always count wegmans as a fantastic community partner you know appreciate i appreciate that. how how well this event is run yeah. uh, i mean any event that i think wegmans is is running is, is a great event um <clears throat> So, you know, I mean, it's a yes for me. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate everything that you guys do with the community. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, absolutely no issue with this. Been very successful in the past. I don't anticipate any changes. And just to echo what Mr. Priest said, Jeff, you still has been phenomenal for this town. We've been a great partnership in, in numerous events throughout the whole year. So absolutely no issues with this. And thank you for being such a good partner. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Sorry. I was going to make a motion, but... No, Mr. Chairman, I just want to take the opportunity while Jeff was yep. here to also thank you uh, for all the good that you do in the community. You guys are always there with a donation to everything that's going on in town, and we can't thank you enough for that, so thank you. No, we, we feel like a true partner in the town of Burlington, and we thank all of you for what you do, and uh, this town is amazing. Thank you. When are you moving in? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the right rates go down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion to approve Wegman, Wegman's one-day uh, alcohol licenses from May 30th to August 29th. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed against? 5-0-0. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. Jeff. Good luck. Thank Pretty you. easy one, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are moving on to 102 Citizens Time. Um, That's, Mr. Chairman, that was scheduled 555. I don't know if you want to wait just a couple of minutes because it's the way it was posted. Can we wait on that, Paul, or should, should? It, it, It's uh, whatever the pleasure of the board is. Uh, the times listed on the agenda are just uh, guesstimates, so um, they're not, uh, unless, it has a, unless it relates to a public hearing, it's not really a, a requirement there. It just doesn't matter to me. I just thought I would wanted to bring that up in case someone was anticipating time. Well, we have one gentleman in the room right now. Anybody online that has their hand up? Nope. No one online. So listen to him. That could bring us to the okay. right time. So, yes, sir. You had your hand up? I did. Okay. Come on down. Just right, sign on. the paper in and before I get say your name. Before I get started, my name is Bob Young. I live yes. in Three Valley, sir. Uh, I thought it was posted that this meeting was supposed to start at 6 o'clock. Excuse me? I saw it posted that this was supposed to be at 6 o'clock. Not. The agenda was not tonight. Next but tonight was, tonight, tonight's meeting was posted at 5.30 okay. because of town meeting. We, po we posted this one early. Okay. All right. I'll have to go back and check my notes, but I didn't see that. Okay. So I'm glad I'm getting this opportunity. Well, you're here, so that's a good thing. Well, uh, it, it's, it's probably not a uh, pleasure uh, visit. Uh, I hope it's going to be. But you may recall I was here exactly one month ago, and I pointed out there's a long-term trash problem and a maintenance issue. I highlighted certain streets for you, and I made a suggestion that you uh, interact, interact with Brian White. So I'm coming back tonight to get a status report of when those streets will be cleaned up and also find out why they got to the point they are and a plan so that it won't happen again. Well, I'll tell you this. Citizens' time is for you to speak. It's for us to listen. I know you were here a month ago. We have talked to Brian, and we're going to go from there. As far as the full discussion goes, that's not going to happen tonight. 
Well, you can reach out to me at email. Well, I'd like to have it as a public record. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But this has been going on a long time. So you're maybe the longest standing person here, sir. Yes, I am. You just got reelected. Yes, so I did. You, you bear some responsibility for what's going on. Yes, you do. Okay. And I also, this is another point. I don't think you and the other politicians in this town really want people to come up here. You give us three lousy minutes, and then you say, well, we're not gonna get into a discussion. Well, when are you gonna get into a discussion? When you're up for re-election? It's a disgrace. Okay, you should you. be able to interact with the people that are, and your seat is temporary, just like everybody there. You're just placeholders. So if you wanna be that like that, let everybody that can hear my voice know, and it's not just you in this committee, it's everyone that I've gone in front of. Three lousy minutes. It's a disgrace. You should be able to tell me right now. You said you met with Brian. Tell me what, 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 what you found out. You're representing me on this board. I have nothing to say. Mr. Chair, may I? Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> so while it's not the policy of the board to discuss things during citizens' time, Mr. Young, there's a reason for that. Discussions are meant to happen during agenda items, and the reason for that is because we have to post things publicly. So if we were to entertain a discussion right now with you on this matter, we'd be breaching open meeting law in doing so. <clears throat> so the reason that we don't engage with citizens during citizens' time specifically is for that reason, so that we're not breaking state law. As to getting an answer, I think Paul was trying to connect back with you so that we could do so, and anything via email is public record. And if you would like it to be brought to a meeting, you can request either in writing or via phone call to have the item placed on the agenda for the board's discussion, at which point the discussion could happen live in a meeting at the chair's choosing. So I just want to be very clear that we are following state law and we're being very particular about it so that we do not put ourselves or you in a predicament where we speak out of turn during open, a public open meeting. But I hope that, that I'm being clear about how I'm phrasing that. If you have questions, again, like Paul said, call an email. You can also call and email us as you have before on other matters. Right. And we're happy to discuss, okay? But the reason that we don't speak dur during citizen time is for that reason. Well, I can guarantee you I am gonna ask that it be brought out in public. Emails are fine, and I found that's my preferred way now. Phone calls can say it never happened. Texting and emails, that's a record. But uh, I am curious, has anybody on the board in the last month gone down and taken a look at those streets that I talked about to see for themselves? Anybody wanna you know, raise their hand and say they did? I know I personally had, have not had the opportunity to, but again, now we're getting into the whole discussion of the matter, so. Okay, well, uh, I have a sense of urgency around this matter. So I didn't know what you just told me. I appreciate you telling me that. And I appreciate the chairman giving me uh, some extra time. But uh, I hope you're gonna share my uh, sense of urgency around this matter. And it may be more locations than what I pointed out. But I, don't, I can't imagine anybody going down there and not being embarrassed for this town. Mr. And it just didn't happen last week. I'd like to chime in too. Go ahead. Bob, I did look at the area on South Bedford Street. Thank you. That's Woburn. The area you're talking about is in Woburn. I'm talking about at Blanchard Road. You said after you passed Northeastern. No, what I said was, starting right. there, you go all the way down to Cambridge Street. Yeah, that's Woburn. Okay, we're gonna Where? stop right now because this is a discussion. Okay. And we can't have discussion. Okay. So, um, you got like, 45 seconds left. Is there anything else you'd like to bring up to us at this point? Uh, I would just like to say that most of that area has to be Burlington. I mean, maybe when you cross Cambridge Street, but that has to be. And even if it isn't, uh, I'd be very surprised. Uh, I didn't think, well, there's no marker that says where it is and where it isn't. And I looked on our street maps, and it goes all the way up to Cambridge Street. So. Appreciate the time, and again, I'm just gonna say I hope you'll get my sense of urgency. Uh, because every day that goes by, that's a high traffic area out and in. And it's, it's, it's awful, it's awful. I mean, and I'm being kind by using that word. Uh, so, thank you for the time, thank you for the clarification. 
And uh, so I will talk with Paul and we'll revisit it and I hope we can uh, get to a solution but also find out why it happened and then have a long-term solution. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you, members of the committee. I'll uh, reach out to you, Paul. Yep, thanks, Bob. Thank you. Okay, anybody else on citizen side? No, seeing there being none. Move to uh, approval sale of uh, 19 South Bedford Street. Oh, John. Oh, John. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the uh, the final step in a in a process that's taken a little over two years. Uh, for some history on this. Uh, South Bedford Street, the, the houses at the bottom between uh, Blanchard and Northeastern are affordable units for the town. One of them came up for sale uh, just over two years ago in a town meeting in May of 2022, uh, approved $350,000 for the purchase of uh, property at 119 South Bedford Street, uh, working with the, the board, working with the housing partnership group, that approved uh, an amount of not to exceed $165,000 uh, to rehab the property to make it available for sale. Uh, the board then posted and had a lottery uh, for the sale of that unit. We had a lucky and uh, willing uh, purchaser, and we're going to close on that property. So we just need the board to take a vote to approve that and to authorize the chair to sign the closing documents. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, are there any questions on this? Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Nick? Uh, no, I just I, I like how John phrased it, lucky and willing participant. <laughs> and that's good. That's good. Sure. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. John, how many applications did you get? Well, we got uh, over 50 applicants. There was, uh, was an open house that had a lot of people there. It was on Saturday. I was uh, over there for a while with uh, Ty, Jim, and Runyon. We got over 50 applicants in, um, you know, we had to be through them because of eligibility requirements. Um, but we had the most we had for any lottery that were actually approved, uh, and then had the lottery uh, back in uh, February, February and March. Um, but 50 applicants answered. Okay. Plus 50 plus. So clearly this is a need in town for affordable housing units. Um, I can't imagine there's a property like that that comes up that often, but are there any on the horizon, any more on the horizon? Uh, well, there's a uh, ten more on that street alone uh, that are de-restricted through the town right now, uh, so when they come up for uh, sale, the town will have the same uh, option of being uh, right for sure. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jimmy? No, uh, no comments. Okay, Question. no comments. Uh, so this is an approval? Right. You need a motion? Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, move uh, to sell the land uh, with the building thereon uh, as known and numbered as 119 South Bedford Street, Burlington, Massachusetts, uh, more particularly described in a deed recorded in the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Book 80381, page 455, <coughs> is authorized pursuant to Article 28 of the May 16, 2022 Annual Town Meeting, and further to authorize the Chair, Joseph E. Morandi, to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to effectuate the sales of property. Seconded. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 5 zero, zero. John, could you just update the board on the sales price? I'm not sure if I caught that in there. Uh, so the original authorization was for 350000 to purchase it. We ended up purchasing it for 335000 and then 165000 uh, we have, and we're selling it. The sales price is, a, is the same as we bought it as a calculation in the formula based on what an affordable buyer could get a mortgage for right now. And as rates go through the roof, sales price is the inverse. As the rates go up, the sales price comes down because you have to be able to afford it and the income levels stay the same. So the this sales price is just under uh, $320,000. Fantastic. All the funds received will go back into the housing uh, funds to be used for affordable housing in the future. So. That's fantastic. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, before we get going on subcommittee reports, the other gentleman hasn't shown up yet, right? Or the no one else came nope. in the room? Well, we're going to table that to the next meeting. That's easy enough. Uh, subcommittee reports. We'll start with uh, Sarah. I actually don't have any. Okay. Point. Uh, just a quick reminder, Monday is Memorial Day, uh, 10 o'clock at Chestnut Hill Cemetery. Uh, the Veterans Office always does a nice job with the uh, ceremony. And this Wednesday at 3.30, they're doing the uh, flag placement at the Veterans Graves at both the uh, Chestnut Hill and Pine Haven Cemetery simultaneously. And it's always a nice, nice to see all the flags out there to honor our uh, servicemen and women who passed in, the, in uh, service. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I had. Nick? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to add on to uh, notes of awareness, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, I have a, a semicolon pin on. Uh, it is a uh, next to a green ribbon. It is uh, the symbol of uh, mental health awareness. And I think, you know, this board, I think, uh, talks about it a lot, which I think is great. And I think that we, should, we could always talk about it more. And I know that the town does a lot through our, our schools and with the police department and our youth and family service offices. Uh, you know, but uh, if you ever see someone struggling, um, you know, you're not sure what to do, you can always make a phone call, ask questions. Um, you know, the more you know, the more you can, you can, you know, uh, help or, or get resources for folks. Um, <clears throat> I also uh, wanted to uh, <clears throat> use this opportunity to say that I know that as, a, as, uh, as members, uh, Slugman uh, Spejo and I have talked about uh, bringing the electronic message board back to town meeting in September. Uh, I'd like to ask that we put that on our agenda moving forward as a standing item so we have the opportunity to discuss that moving forward uh, in a public setting so that we can uh, develop a plan for uh, and, and discuss how we're going to present that to uh, town meeting. And then uh, again, as uh, Chairman Miranda, you mentioned to Mr. Young a few minutes ago, the reason that we were at 5.30 tonight is because town meeting is tonight, night three. If you haven't been following along, I highly encourage folks to uh, tune into town meeting or, or go back and watch it because that is where, uh, you know, especially in May, uh, all of our, our financials, uh, large rezoning projects, uh, are decided by the folks that you elect as uh, your precinct representatives. Um, and it's a great place to, to see that discussion happen. Uh, it's all over Facebook. Uh, you know, there's a, now a discussion page. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a, I think, a great starting point for folks to get involved in discussions that affect us as community members um, and where a lot of decisions get, get made uh, effectively throughout the year. So, uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Jim? I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. You have nothing. Uh, chairman's report. You took some, he took some, <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Tagarino? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know everybody's commented when you came in on the room tonight um, at the pretty slick uh, new upgrades we've made to the hearing room in, in terms of hybrid meetings. Uh, that's all. A uh, special thank you to Representative Ken Gordon, who had uh, put an earmark in, in last year's budget for us. Obviously, uh, we had the assistance of uh, Senator Friedman as well to get that through and included in, in, in the budget. Uh, our MIS department has been working tirelessly uh, to try to get this installation ready for, you know, there's always meetings in this room, so to do the work, we needed to find a, a quiet time there, and uh, they've gone above and beyond again to get this room ready. Uh, this is there'll be additional funds for uh, the town hall annex uh, meeting room, uh, the Grandview Farm meeting rooms and the barn, as well as uh, the school committee meeting room. And we were able to also um, obtain a piece of equipment that made the um, town meeting experience for those that were in the hybrid environment uh, a better experience as well. So uh, thank you to Representative Gordon. He's coming by tomorrow morning to check out, check out the system. And, um, uh, it's all, all thanks to uh, his efforts for us up, up at the State House. So. Very good. Yeah, it does. Uh, I can tell you this. It looks fantastic. I can actually see the other people sitting behind the big TVs that weren't there no more after so many years. So it's good, good job, guys. Yeah, great, thank great you. Job. Guys. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, on that note, I'll need a motion to adjourn. Pardon somebody? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Saying? Anyone opposed? No? Okay. Please go. Thank you.